Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you all how to create a bouncing ball. Um, the ball is going to start at the top of the screen, um, animate to the bottom, do a squash and stretch effect, bounce back up and go to the top. Uh, we're going to cover um, how to rename layers, uh, add a new layer. Um, we're going to convert graphic symbol. Um, Art into a graphic symbol. We're going to cover motion tweens on how to animate keyframes, frames in general, um, and a few of the properties of some of the tools we're going to be using while we do this. So I've got Adobe Animate already open. I'm going to do Create New. And for this semester, we're going to be using uh, 1280 by 720 primarily. That's in uh, pixels right here. So it's going to be 12, 1280 pixels wide. Um, by 720 pixels um, long or tall or in the height aspect ratio, so up and down vertically. So uh, 1280 horizontally, 720 vertically. Um, we're going to be utilizing a frame rate of 24 frames per second, and the platform type of ActionScript 3.0 is going to be the same. Now, um, if you have any questions or uh, concerns about using a 1280 by 720 aspect ratio. It's a high definition format. Um, don't go higher than that for now at least um, because using a higher resolution can slow down your system um, considerably in some cases. Uh, and you can always rescale your art later uh, pretty easily as well. Um, plus it, 1280 by 720 keeps a lot of that detail uh, very clean. Um, your standard is a little bit too small, um, so we're going to utilize primarily 1280 through, by 720 throughout the entire semester. Um, so again, 1280, 720, and the units of pixels, 24 frames per second at your frame rate, and action script 3.0. I'm going to hit Create. Now I've got this here. Um, this is my stage. And this is what we're going to be creating this animation on. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit just so you can see a little bit more. And all I did was press Control minus. Um, you can adjust the zoom here as well if I want to do 75%, fit in window, um, show frame, show all, 100%. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. 50% and I'm just using control minus and plus to zoom in and out or you can also use this drop down menu right here the other thing I want to do is make sure that we're all using the um, same workspace unless you're familiar and have used Adobe animate before um, you know feel free to use any workspace you want but I'll be using primarily the essentials workspace if yours is uh, on something else just go ahead and click on this workspace tab right here. Hover over it, it says workspaces. Click on that. Go down to essentials. Click on that. And now I'm back in my essentials um, now, uh, workspace. Now let's just pretend I accidentally do something like this where I undock something and it becomes difficult to work with in the workspace. You can always reset it just by clicking that drop down on workspaces and click this little reset button basically that's what it what it means and it'll say are you sure you want to uh, reset essentials to its original layout yes okay, and it'll just set everything back to normal so let's get into the animating part right um, the first thing I need to do is on my layer one here I need to create some art and that art is this first piece of art we're going to be creating is going to be my ground line so I'm going to use my line tool for this. You could use the rectangle tool, but I'm going to use the line tool. Just keep things as simple as possible. And your stroke size by default is probably sitting at one, and that's one pixel. And you'll notice that it's a very thin line, um, sort of difficult to see. And what that does is um, this is what we're going to use for our ball to make the appearance as if it's making contact with the ground. So I'm going to undo that for now. Okay, and just to show you, you could also use your selection tool, select the line, just press delete. That's another way to do it. Um, so back to my line tool, 
I think using the stroke size at one is too small. So I'm gonna change that to 10. And this is your color. I'm gonna make that black. So you could have a ground line at any other color, right? Um, I'm gonna keep mine at black. And then also this opacity, or uh, in this case, they call it alpha. In Adobe Animate, they call it alpha. That's basically your transparency or opacity. I'm gonna leave that at 100%. Uh, the stroke style here, I'm gonna leave as a solid. And I'm also going to keep the width at uniform. Now you can change some of these settings, but for this demonstration, this works perfectly fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw this line on my stage. And I'm just going to click on the far left of the side. I'm going to hold shift to keep it a perfectly straight line and just draw it straight across. Now, if you don't use shift, you might accidentally have a weirdly angled line. Holding shift will snap it to be perfectly straight horizontal across. And it'll also allow you to rotate that line at 45 degree intervals. So um, just so you know, so I'm going to keep it straight across. Go ahead and release. Now I've got that line. Um, one quick thing I'd like to cover with you as well is this gray area here fills in. So you'll know if you have a layer um, because it'll fill in with art. So I'm going to just undo that real quick just so you can tell. You'll see it's now sort of that transparent gray with a hollow circle. If I draw my ground line straight across, you'll notice it colors in and you have a solid black circle now. And that's how you know you have um, art on your stage on that particular layer. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to keep my file organized. It makes it much cleaner and easy to work with, especially um, if you ever plan on becoming a professional animator when you're working with other animators on a same file. You want them to be able to find everything in your seen very easily as well. So we're going to rename our first layer, layer one, by double clicking on it. And we're going to name this ground underscore line. Okay. Um, so that's my ground line. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I lock that layer. So in order to do that, um, and the reason we're going to lock it, you'll see the little lock symbol here. The reason we lock it is so we don't accidentally select things on it and make changes to it accidentally that we don't mean to. You know, it can be rather annoying in a way if you're ac if you're drawing on one layer and you accidentally grab something on another layer and make changes to it. So I'm just going to undo that. Control Z back into place. And my line is perfectly straight across. Now. To lock the layer, you'll see this little lock. Now, if you press this lock, it's gonna lock it. If, you, if I had more layers, it'll lock every layer, okay? Um, it'll lock or unlock all layers. It does it right there as it, I highlight over it. So in this case, I'm just gonna click the lock on this little one. Um, and then the little eyeball here with the line through it means now I can't see it. It's the, it's the visibility of it. So if I hover over it, show or hide all layers. So that would show or hide all the layers. In this case, this would just be uh, for this particular layer. I'm going to go ahead and click that so you can see it, but it's locked. I can't make any changes to it, which is what I'm exactly what I'm going for. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to cover how to create another layer, but also create the ball to animate. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead to this little plus sign down here and I'm going to click on it. It says new layer. And now I've got layer two. The so layer two, I'm going to go ahead and rename this right now. And I'm going to call it bouncing ball. Okay. That's my bouncing ball layer. You'll notice just as I was mentioning before, it's different because we haven't drawn anything on it yet. Right. So a, a ball is typically um, in, in, a three-dimensional sense, it's a sphere, but in this case, it's going to be a circle since we're working with two dimensions uh, uh, for 2D animation. And I'm going to go over here to my toolbar. I'm going to you're going to see this rectangle tool, apostrophe R on it. If I click and hold on that tool, I'm going to go to my oval tool, keyboard shortcut O. My oval tool allows me to draw circles, just like before. If I hold Shift can create a perfect circle, right? And in my properties tab over here, I'm going to change my fill color. I actually really like the orange, so I'm going to stick with the orange. Kind of reminds me of a basketball. Um, and then the stroke color I'm going to select is going to be 
black. So my outline, the stroke is always going to be that the, the line work of a, a piece of art where the fill color is going to be the color that's filled in. Okay, I'm going to keep the alpha on the fill and the stroke at 100%. And in this case, on the stroke size, I'm going to make it just slightly smaller. I'm going to make it five in this case. I'm going to keep the style and the width um, exactly how it is. The only thing I'm changing is the colors and the stroke size. So now I'm on my bouncing ball. I couldn't even draw one on my, uh, my ground line if I wanted to without a warning popping up. Current layer ground line is either locked or hidden. Would you like to unlock to show this layer? In this case, no. I don't because I want to draw my bouncing ball only on my bouncing ball layer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a circle holding shift, create that perfectly uniform circle. If I don't hold shift, you'll see I have the ability to make it um, oval like and very thin or wide or whatever. And we are going to do that. But right now we want to keep it in a perfect circle. So I'm going to keep it as a perfect circle holding shift and I'm just going to click and release. All right. So now I've got my uh bouncing ball right and i've got my ground line and my layers are named and the next thing i need to do is i want to start to get ready for animation my art's complete right i'm going to start the animation process so the first thing i need is frames and i'm going to go ahead and resize my timeline this is probably how it starts by default by clicking and dragging this here with a little, I, I think they look like little mountains there. Zoom in, um, or the two little triangles. I'm gonna use that little drag bar, and I'm gonna make it just so I can see my frames one through thirty, because we're gonna be working with thirty frames of animation. All right. Now, on frame uh, thirty, go ahead and click. It's uh, easy to distinguish because it's just a slightly different color. On frame thirty. And I probably need to hide myself in this one. On frame 30, I'm going to right click. And you'll see I have all of this information here. So are all these different possibilities I could do. So in this case, I'm not going to insert a keyframe. I'm just going to insert frame, right? Keyboard shortcut F5. Now I've got that now on my bouncing ball layer, okay? and. I want to show you as I scrub this timeline, this is a really, really common mistake I see often by students is um, they'll be playing an animation, right? And they'll see, um, you know, I'm going to press enter just to play it. You'll see that the ground line is only there for one frame. It's because you only have it playing for one frame. Even though this is stationary objects on the stage, it is now officially an animation because we have 30 frames of animation here, even though it's stationary. So you always have to remember um, a common thing that I'll see is, you know, I, I was playing back my animation and the background disappears halfway, right? Um, well, the background, you probably, and this is 99.9% .9 of the time, you didn't give it enough frames to play on. So I'm going to right click on my 30 frames. You'll see it only plays for that one frame. Stretch it out to any frame two and beyond, it's not there because you only have it on frame one. So on frame 30, right click, insert frame. And now when I play it back, you'll see it's on all the frames, frame one through 30. Okay. So with that being said, I've got my art and I have my frames and I have my ground line and I have my layers name to keep my scene nice and organized. The next thing I want to do is I want to create this ball and I want to convert it to a symbol. Now, um, you have to select everything on this layer. You have to make sure you select the circle. Now, another common mistake I'll see is you'll click this and you don't realize that you're not clicking the entire thing. I've only selected just the fill. I did not select the stroke of my circle or the outline if you will i'm just going to undo that a couple times just to get back to where i started and and there's a couple ways you could select everything make sure you have this arrow selection tool or the selection tool the arrow tool i call it um just click and drag and make sure you have that entire thing highlighted including the the outline and the fill color another quick way to do this is to just click on the layer bouncing ball down here 
and it's going to highlight everything on that layer. So even if I had more things on this layer, it would select them all simultaneously, which is great. It's my personal favorite way to select everything on one layer. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to convert this to a symbol. We're going to be working with our first symbol. It's going to be our first animation. And symbols are really, really nice because we don't have to draw in or move this ball every frame. It's going to basically fill it in for us when we get to that point. So we need to create or convert this artwork into what we call a symbol in Adobe Animate. And to do that, we're going to right click on our selected object, make sure everything's selected, right click and go to convert to symbol, F8. F8 is the keyboard shortcut. Now you're going to get this pop-up window that pops up. I'm going to call it bouncing ball GR. So for graphic symbol, I'm going to make sure it is a graphic symbol. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead. Don't worry about the advanced or the registration. Don't have to worry about that at all. Just go ahead and click OK. Now the cool thing about converting things to symbols is it makes things easier to reuse in an animation if you ever needed to. So in this particular case, if I go to my library, you'll see I have my bouncing ball GR, which we just created. So if I wanted to, I could create, click, just click and drag more onto the scene, which is super awesome. But in this case, we don't want to do that. Just wanted to show you that you could. So that's a benefit of creating symbols uh, and artwork that you can easily reuse and quickly too. So now I've got my bouncing ball converted to a symbol. I have my ground line and it's locked. I need to start animating. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to right click on my bouncing ball timeline on the layer, just the bouncing ball. I'm going to right click and I'm going to scrub all the way up and I'm going to create motion tween. You can only create a motion tween if an object is a symbol on a layer, okay? So, very important to know. And and it you, you it, you'll catch on pretty quickly cuz it's going to pop up with little warning windows and stuff to say, are you sure, you, you know, or do you wish to convert you know, everything on this layer to a symbol and blah, 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 blah. It's just easier to keep it organized doing it this way. So with the bouncing ball layer now it changes a different color and that's how Adobe Animate is signifying to you or showing you that it is now ready to do motion tweens on it. So you'll know it's ready for animation. So in this case, we have 30 frames. We're going to make it go from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen and then back up. Okay. So on frame 15, and you can always type in frame 15. So this is where you can always know what, exactly which frame you're on. On frame 15, I'm going to click and drag this ball down. Now you'll notice I accidentally dragged it on, a, on an angle. So if you remember how to do it, um, how to keep everything in a straight line or vertically or horizontally like we did with the line tool, just hold shift while you're dragging and then just get it to touch the line, the ground line, and then release. And you'll notice down here, it creates a little diamond, right? That little diamond is a keyframe now. Um, and what that is, it, this, it, it, Adobe Animate knows the position, the size, uh, you know, even the, the rate of speed because we have the fr 24 frames per second. Um, and we're on frame 15, so it's playing frame one, it starts at the top, frame 15, it ends at the bottom. So the next thing I want to do, I drag this out to frame 30, right? Make sure I'm on frame 30, whoops. And what I'm gonna do here, now I could do this a couple different ways, but I'll show you this way first. I'm just gonna hold shift again and drag it up, and now I've got my ball up here, right? Now I do want to show you something that's kind of uh, that can be irritating. It's not. It, it can be difficult to work around sometimes. Put it that way. So on my frame 15, we're going to start this squash and stretch effect, and you're going to see what I'm talking about here shortly uh, about the the nuance of animation sometimes. So I'm going to click my free transform tool. That's the tool directly under the selection tool. It's got the square with the dotted lines behind the arrow. Um, so selecting my free transform tool, I'm going to start my squash. And how I do that is I just have my object selected, right? My symbol. I'm going to go ahead and squash and stretch it. 
I'm going to make sure I'm still touching that ground line. Now the thing you'll see that's irritating, or can be, is that frame 1, anything beyond frame 15, it kept the properties of the scale, not the position. It just kept the properties of the scale. So in order to get this back to being a perfect circle, um, here's one way of doing it in this particular case. This is the only way you can do it, or only um, time, I guess, it's you can do it in, in this instance, is if you wanted it to return to its original properties of the first one, and that's everything, that's going to be the scale the, and the transform and everything, highlighting... Clicking on the first, very first frame, there's two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you the faster way first for this particular instance. Click on the first layer, uh, or on the bouncing ball layer on the first frame, and you'll notice you have that little square highlight around the arrow. Just click and drag that all the way to frame 30, and now frame 30 is identical to frame 1. Now that's the fast way to do this. Now to the way to do this, the best way to do this because that's not always what you want to accomplish um, to reset sort of um, some properties. And, okay. So, back to where we were. Now, the, the best way to do this if you're creating a fluid animation and things are changing constantly and you don't want to keep that frame or, or those properties of the scale is to, on this particular last frame, this is a really good habit. This is an amazing, excellent habit to get into, and it only takes a second or two. Let me hide myself real quick off the top. The best thing to do, and a, one of the best habits to get into, is after you create an animation or create a keyframe using a motion tween, right-click on it and do... Insert keyframe all. That's insert keyframe all. And what you're going to see here is now when I use my free transform tool and do it this way, you'll notice that it goes back to the original shape. And I didn't need to click and drag this here. You can, but that's the best way to really go ahead and tackle that. Um, so that's how you go ahead and insert keyframe all to remember all of those properties. Now in this particular instance here, let me turn myself back on so you can see me and the keyboard. On frame 15, I have my first squash and stretch basically, but this is more so the squash versus the stretch. Um, I'm going to go two frames before, so I'm going to be on frame 13 here. And I'm going to use my free transform tool. And this doesn't need to be perfect. But now if I change the scale here. Hold shift to get it to touch that ground line again. It did keep those properties there, which is cool. Um, but you'll notice that the transform's gone up a little bit. So what I could have done differently instead of doing that in that order. And this is something that it's better to get used to it in the beginning. Um, is here, I want to right click and I'm gonna do insert keyframe. I'm gonna do insert keyframe, let me hide myself. I can see myself covering it. Insert. Right click, insert keyframe, all. Okay. So now I don't have to worry about the transform or the position or the size or the scale or anything like that while I'm creating my stretch here. I'm gonna go ahead and on frame 13 as I was doing earlier, I've inserted keyframe all so I don't have to worry about it changing anything. Frame 13, 14, 15, it's back to here. And then frame 17, I want to create the same thing. And again, in this case, I've got it down. 
and I could right click on this particular frame insert and sometimes you'll notice um, for whatever reason let's see how do I if I accidentally do that if I have an entire layer selected and I did that insert keyframe wall here insert keyframe Oh, it's because it's not a motion tween. Oh, and if you double click on a on a on a motion tween, you'll see you get some extra properties. Totally ignore them. Don't worry about it right now. It's a, a graphing editor that we don't need to get into just this second. Um, so let's just pretend you accidentally selected everything on the layer down here, and you did right click insert keyframe I'll just do it all you what could potentially happen on that timeline is it creates everything um, and mem remembers everything and you don't want to do that so I just strongly suggest I'm just undoing it a couple times just to make sure um, that you only do it on the layers that you want or, or the keyframes it, sh it shouldn't do cause you too many issues but just in case I like just wanted to bring it up I've seen it also where it creates like uh, keyframes on every single frame. So that might be something that Adobe Animate has fixed over the years. Um, but it is something that used to happen. So if you do see that happen, just undo it. Um, anyway, back to animating. So ball starts at the top. Stretches on its way down. Makes contact, squashes when it makes contact to the ground. And then it starts to bounce back up. Now... If you wanted, you could always do a right click. If you wanted them to be identical, you could always do right click, copy properties, and then you would just right click, and then you would do paste properties. And they'll be identical from frame on frame 13 and frame 17. So I play this back, I've got my bouncing ball. It's bouncing a little slow, but you see what I mean now one last thing um, this is perfect exactly how to submit it properly um, one last thing I'd like to show you is just a little finicking around with the timing if you wanted it to be a little bit change the timing say I bring it two frames over so now it's on frame 11 you can just click once make sure it's highlighted in blue and then drag and you'll see you move those little diamonds over and now my bouncing ball is gonna have a little bit more of a squash effect a little bit more so timing does really change the feel of an animation so um submitting something like this perfectly exactly what i'm looking for um let me make sure i covered everything we converted the the bouncing ball to a symbol we created uh two layers and named them ground line and and ball or bouncing ball um we inserted 30 frames on both layers uh, we animated the ball going up and down. We also animated the squash and stretch. So, you know, if you've never animated anything before, congratulations on your first animation. Um, to play it back smoothly, if you'd like, I'll show you real quick one last thing. Um, press Control and Enter. It's going to create what they call a Swift, and you'll see your first ever animation. So, we just created an animated bouncing ball moving up and down the screen um if you have any questions at all feel free to shoot me a message on canvas inbox um the quickest easiest fastest way to get a response from me um and other than that uh you know happy animating and i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much